I'm Ross Benjamin, back with Doug Upstone. We're going to be talking about American League win totals today on today's video. Doug, how are you today? I'm excellent, Ross, and really excited to talk about this topic. Uh, love baseball, and so and with, the to with the win totals, it's always an intriguing thing to do, especially uh, early in the season, because we don't know everything about the team, so let's have at it. Well, what about the teams that you like to go over the win total in the American League? Doug, you want to share those with us? I'll be happy to, Ross. And the first team that comes to mind for me is the Toronto Blue Jays at, uh, going over 82 and a half. And the thing I like about this team is that, that one of the problems that they had last year was chemistry uh, in their clubhouse, which a lot of people think impacted the team in a negative way. So with Brett Lowry, who was one of the key components to that, he has now been jettisoned out to Oakland. And instead, they have picked up uh, Josh Donaldson, who, in my opinion, is the best all-around third baseman in baseball, and Russell Martin, who's a real steady guy and coming off a very good year. We know how good the rest of their offense is, Ross, and their, their pitching staff. Yes, there are questions about it, and, and the bullpen is not necessarily a lockdown at this time. So I think we'll certainly see. But I, when I look at the rest of the division, and other than Boston, I can't see anybody being, uh, being as close to Boston as what Toronto is, and I like them for the over. As much as I hate to say so, I agree with you on that selection. Although they're not one of my selections, I had to leave somebody out. I do agree uh, on all your points on the Toronto Blue Jays. Love the lineup. Love the acquisition of Russell Martin. You know who I like a lot? My best play as far as my American League win total goes, again, is the Kansas City Royals. This is a team that got to the World Series a, a season ago, lost in seven games uh, very close to winning a world title. Obviously, at 81 and a half wins, which their total is set at, the books feel that the Royals were a fluke last season. Well, I don't agree with that. I think this team is for real. If anything, I look to, for them to get better and take the experiences they went through last year and really build upon them. I love their lineup, a ton of speed. The only thing they lack is a true prop power hitter. But they did pick up Juan Rios in the offseason uh, from Texas. He certainly will help in that role. This pitching staff, as they proved during the postseason last year, is no fluke, no joke, and they're only going to get better. And I look for Alex Gordon and Eric Hosmer to improve upon their power numbers. I love the Royals at over 81 and a half wins. Any other selections you'd like to share with the viewers in the American League, Doug? Sure. Uh, you know, while we're on the topic of overs, let's let's look at the Cleveland Indians as, you know, has won, I believe, 92 and 85 games the last two years. They have uh, Terry Francona as their manager, who's certainly among the best managers in all, of, all in all of baseball. So I think that will continue to be a positive trend for them. I think their pitching staff suffered a little bit last year. And they, with uh, now they'll have Carlos Carrasco and Danny Salazar back. So I think that'll give them a lot more depth. Their bullpen was a little shaky, but Terry Francona always finds a way to make it work. And I think he will once again in the American League Central is the Detroit Tigers and their win totals at 84 and a half, which to me seems quite low for a team that's won 90 plus games the last four years. Now, I still like their lineup very much, one through six. I think it's as good as what there is in baseball. And then along the line, they're pitching. Yes, they lost Max Scherzer. But if the reports are true that Justin Verlander is, has looked very sharp so far, and again, we'll have to see if that plays out. But I still like what they have going forward. And to me, 84 and a half seems awfully low, Ross. So I, I'm just gonna, so those two teams and all the, for overs in the American League, I also like them as well. What are your thoughts, Ross? Well, you know, I, the 84 and a half uh, total wins is certainly awful low for a club that has the history that the Tigers have had in recent seasons. And to me, I'm a little leery. That almost looks like a sucker bet to me. Victor Martinez, uh, off-season knee surgery, looks like he'll be ready for opening day. A lot of question marks for me with Detroit. We'll see how that pans out. The Cleveland Indians, though, I agree with a lot of your points there. Terry Francona, to me, one of the best managers in baseball. The players love to play for him. And I really like Corey Kluber at the top of that uh, pitching rotation for the Cleveland Indians. I think he's a future star and possibly a future AL Cy Young winner. I like the Boston Red Sox. Uh, going back to the video that we did on our AL Futures, you know that I like the Red Sox most of all, and it would be awful hypocritical for me not to like them over 86 and a half wins. I mean, we mentioned this in that video, 
as well. The Red Sox went 90 and 72 in 2011, 69 and 93 in 2012, 97 and 65 in 2013, and then last year 71 and 91 in 2014. If you're not picking up on this, on odd years they do awfully well, and I think this odd year will suit the Red Sox to go over the total of 86 and a half wins. Powerful lineup, one through six. Their pitching staff has the potential to be very good. Clay Buckholz needs to return to the form he displayed in 2013 when he went 12 and one with less than a 2.00 ERA. And the one team I don't like, Doug, I think you agree with me on this one. The Oakland A's had under 81 and a half wins. I think general manager Billy Bean really has his work cut out for him. A lot of key components that were lost from last season's club that actually tanked it down the stretch. And I don't like their pitching staff, and I think their lineup leaves a lot to be desired. How about yourself? Any other selections you want to share with the viewers? Yeah, absolutely. I got one more for you, Ross, and I agree with your assessment completely on Oakland. I think that, you know, they just decided to go a different direction, uh, for, for better, for worse. And uh, right now, I think it's going to be for worse. <laughs> and now, uh, the other team that I'd like to go under is Minnesota. Now, their total is already low. It's 70, uh, 70 and a half wins. But I look at that division, I mentioned already, I think Cleveland and uh, Detroit are going to be improved over what their number is. The White Sox certainly are also improved. And you like the Royals, Ross. So that's four teams in that division. Okay, I don't see Minnesota being able to compete with those teams. Yes, last year they were 36 and 40 in division games. But their pitching staff outside of Philip Hughes, okay, last year was pretty pathetic. Uh, Perkins had, did a nice job as a closer. I'm not sure if that will continue, and I think you share the same feeling there. Irvin Santana, nice pickup. But overall, is this team really headed in the right direction? Certainly would not appear so, and I look for them to be under the total on this particular uh, episode. I concur. I think that Philip Hughes is coming off a career year, and it'll be hard-pressed to even come close to the kind of season he had a year ago. Awfully strange with no Ron Garden hire, excuse me, in the dugout this season for the first time in many seasons for the Minnesota Twins. For Ross Benjamin and Doug Upstone, thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow. All the best of luck to each and every one of you.